Welcome to Cherry Red TV. My name is Ian McNay, and my guest today is Glyn Hodges. Hi, Glyn. Hi. And Glyn is the relatively new assistant manager at AFC Wimbledon. He's had quite a career, both playing-wise and coaching-wise, at different clubs, and we're going to find out what he's been doing all those years, and also try and get a bit deeper into what makes Glyn tick, and uh, just find out more about him on different levels. So, Glyn, just uh, it's quite. I'm going to read the first bit because it's quite impressive. You made 232 appearances for Wimbledon. Yep. You scored 55 goals over seven seasons. Then you also played for Newcastle, Watford, Palace, Sheffield United, Derby, Hull, Forest. You played in Hong Kong twice, and then you finished off at TNS and Scarborough. And then you had a coaching career which covered Barnsley, Wales. I should have mentioned you also play for Wales too. You yeah. played 18 times for Wales. Yeah, yeah, Scored yeah. a couple of goals. You'll hear that with my accent as we interview. <laughs> uh, so after after you coached the under 21s at Wales, you were at Blackburn, Man City, Fulham, QPR, and Stoke. So you've been a lot of clubs, a very varied career. And uh, you started off playing for Mitcham Royals. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was it was great. I mean, it was a good it was a good side. You know, I was brought up in Mitcham, um, and every it was it was a boys' club that went. I think we started at under 11s, and it went up to under 16. So every age at that time at that club, there was boys either training or, or attached to professional clubs. So I think it was just normal if if the if a if a scout had seen the older age teams, then they obviously checked the younger age teams. So as soon as uh, as soon as it, it, as soon as people started looking at us under 12s, we had some we had some good players, really good players, and a lot went on to to play professional football. Um, so it was it was probably a, it was a it was a good choice of club to be at, um, and a successful one. And it was you know it was it was great. I think you had the chance to go to Chelsea, didn't you? Yeah, well, I, I mean that was my first chop. My first club was Chelsea. Uh, but be fair, in, we're living where I lived in South London. I was living in in, in Mitcham. Uh, actually, Norbury. I was going to score in Mitcham. I could go. You, I could go anywhere. I was at Fulham. I went to Crystal Palace. I went to Chelsea. Um, I went up to Arsenal. You know, you could you could go, actually do the rounds. You could go to different clubs, um, and luckily, you know, you, you could keep that going. So I was at Chelsea. The, the, the best the best coaching was Chelsea, the mo one I enjoyed the most. Um, and uh, I was there for four years. And then right at the end, right right when I was getting to 15, 16, then Wimbledon came along. So I was doing the two, but obviously. At 16, you had to choose. You you couldn't you couldn't do both. So um, you know, I got offered an apprenticeship at, at Wimbledon and a, and, a, and a year's pro on top of that. So a three-year deal, I got offered at 16. So uh, I jumped at the chance. And you came with Paul Fisher, then, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, well, that was funny because we were Fisher was doing the same, and and I just said, come on, come 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 to Wimbledon, you know. So it, it, we'd both. I'm convinced we'd have both got offered scholarships or apprentices at Chelsea. Um, and they were in the first division. Obviously, Wimbledon were in the, the, the old first division, and Wimbledon were in the fourth division. So um, you know, it was a big, it was a big step to think. You know, you you, you go down there, but uh, spoke spoke to Fish, talked him into it, and he was happy to come along as well. So we both left Chelsea at the same time and both signed for Wimbledon. And the manager at the time was Darren. Wasn't yes, Darren, Darren was the manager. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think that that was the pull for both me and Fish. You know, we'd been to Chelsea with Dario. I uh, really enjoyed it, the, the, you know, the, the coaching and, the, and the, the work you were getting. You know, you 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 had been taught how to play football, taught to play the correct way, um, and and you know it was it was it was good. And then wherever he was going to end up at the time I was leaving school, then I think that was that was the time. So he was at Derby before that. Uh, I went to Derby up in the holidays, you know, in the six weeks holidays you go and you go and play for Derby. Um, but I was 15 then, so a bit, you know, not not quite ready to leave school. So as soon as the school year leaves. Uh, school year and I was leaving for the, the apprenticeship there I was at Wimbledon so that was the natural progression and then how long did you have to wait until you got your first your first first team game well I was um, actually the, the next year so I had, I had a season I was the first year uh, apprentice and then the second start of the second year so I was still an apprentice uh, I made my debut in the September um, September 81 I think it was so yeah September Halifax was, uh, Halifax it? away yeah, yeah. 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 So it was quite quick. So that was one of the reasons you thought, you know. But the the, the thing about which is a, is a bit likened it a little bit now to where we are now with with AFC Wimbledon. If you if you was young enough, we, we you try. I was a sixteen and training with the first team. So we had a group of six apprentices, but there wasn't a youth team and a reserve team and, and a first team. There was just a group of players. Yeah. And you trained every day with the first team. So you have a you have a sink or swim. So you know, and every single one of the, the six of us did great. 
but I think I think out of that six, I think three three went. Mark Morris was one of them. So me, Fish, and Mark Morris, we actually went on and, and played, and the other three not so. But they still they still went on and played a good careers non-league, you know. So it was a tough school, and one that they don't get now, and one that probably helped us. And the first team players treated you as equal, did they? Yeah. Oh, well, I know they used to they used to get. Uh, I wouldn't say equal. We were cannon fodder, and we used <laughs> to get all sorts of tricks played on us and little things, and they were just moulding us and and you know, knocking us down if we needed knocking and putting us into shape because we were young, naive, whatever you want to put it, green as whatever you want to call it, and we were you know wide-eyed and stupid and did you know and they got us to do all sorts of things. So, but they did. They accepted us because we were good players. Firstly, that was the main thing. Yeah. If you was a good player, then they'll accept you. After that, then obviously there was. Um, a lot of skullduggery, you want to call it or whatever, but you know you getting you was getting moulded and 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 put on the right path to to be successful. And then I think the following summer you spent in Finland playing yeah. for a club there. Yeah, that must yeah. have been a good experience. That was great. That was great. I mean, we 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 did that a lot. The club did it a lot. There was three fish and Mark Morris went to New Zealand for six months, and I wanted to go to New Zealand because you know I think I'll go I just I want to go and play out there, but. Um, Dave Bassett then who took over said no go and play in Finland so I had three months there and I, at that time I think I was the only one in the first team they did follow me into the first team but I was just in front of them a little bit at that time so I had to be back for pre-season so um, but but the the, 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 um, the three months out there I, it, was, it was great yeah really enjoyed it yeah instead of having a rest you just carried on now the boys are saying we need a rest and they're tired but there was nothing like that you went you play I think I played 32 games in my first season at 17 and went straight out and played in Finland. So why is that? Why do players need to rest more? Then? I think they do now. I think it's different now. I think the demands are high. They're all athletes now. They are. They are fit. It is. You know. They've got the sports science. They've got. They've. You know, it's really the targets and and the, the the GPS, the units, the heart rates. They really are honed in now. They know exactly. But a bit like a racehorse, they know exactly what they can and can't do in the periods of measured. Then we didn't know any different. We just thought we felt great. Go and play. You know, as a kid, as a kid at 15, 16, sometimes at the end of the season, he was playing every night of the week and and twice on a Sunday. So you just you just went with it and you did it, and it made you robust. It, you know, I think it was a it was a good thing. But you know, we weren't as fit we weren't as fit as they, them boys are. The boys are now. You know, okay. we, our lifestyle wasn't our lifestyle, and and the the the, the body, the probably the when we played, it's hard to say the the not the fitness wise, but. Um, the excursion or whatever that the, the, the fit you were, we didn't, we weren't performing to the level these boys today are performing. Yeah, and were you at that time because I think you worked at Billingsgate Billingsgate yeah. Market in the evening, so yeah. in the morning, so you were up yeah. at five a.m. That was, it was that was in the it was in the in the in the evenings to begin with. I mean, when I was playing, uh, my, my dad, my dad, um, is, 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 actually it was in Brixton Market, a fish shop in Brixton Market, and my dad had been, my dad had done that. I think he ended up doing it for 50, 60 years. My dad. He worked his life at this shop, so to help him, to help him, me and my brother would work. I would go Thursday afternoon after training and Friday afternoon after training, so he could get off. We could clear up and take the takings and actually work the shop. And then when he in the summer, then I'd do when we had the break in the summer. Then I'd do the five o'clock. I go to Billingsgate, do the buying, come back and work the shop to give him a holiday, give him a break because yeah. you know he worked like a trojan, my dad. And and you now when you're playing football, you know, I always say I'm going to work, but it's not work when you look at people. You know the, the amount of work he had to put in. So it was just an opportunity to help him, and again, it was it was you know, he didn't it wasn't I don't think I could see too many Premier League players doing that now. I was actually, <laughs> I I was actually playing in the first division, and I think Wally was the same. Yeah. Wally worked his stall in, um, yeah. in Shepherd's Market. He was talking about it, yeah. yeah so yeah. you know, it's done what you did, and you helped the family, and, and that's how it was, and you got on with it, and it wasn't wasn't any hardship. Yeah. So I don't know how long it was after you joined, but D Dario left, and then yeah. Dave Bassett how yeah, he yeah. took over as manager. Yeah. And that I think was quite a change of style for you, wasn't yeah. it? Because it was a bit of a more direct yeah. style. I mean, the reason the reason I signed for Wimbledon was 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 you know Dario and purely Dario and the way he wanted to play football and the way you know I've been brought up with his style of football and and the understanding of how it was to be played was that. And when um, when Dave Bassett Harry took over, it was it went from that to a bit more a bit more direct, a bit more gung ho, a bit, a bit a slightly a bit different. And you know, it, it took a while for me to adjust. And, and to be fair, to probably mentally more than anything, because I was, I was probably coming short to come and play to feet, and the ball would bypass me, and I'd come and get the ball to feet there, and it would bypass me again. So it was like, well, what's going on here? I didn't, <laughs> didn't enjoy, I wasn't enjoying the football, and it took a bit of head scratching to work it out. But 
you know, a bit clever, and and, and, the, and we, we we got encouraged. I mean, we're probably doing a similar thing now. We got encouraged to play opposition's half, and when we got into the you know the final third or in the, in the in the edge of the final third, that's when you could play your football, as it were. So it was just a means to an end, getting the ball up there quicker, and then you had more opportunities to attack. So you know, you you, you did you did. I did come round to it, or I definitely come round to it, and I think the, the the spell of winning games, winning more than you than you lose, the fact you got promotion, the fact that there was a promotion on top of that, the fact that you know you just feel the thing gathering momentum, and you went with it, and and to be fair, uh, it was it was good. Because you started off as midfield and then changed to winger. Yeah, yeah, that was a midfield player who wanted to get on the ball, so I think Dave Bassett saw that and thought, get him out of the way, get him on the wing. I don't want any midfield players to get on the ball from the getting off the back four. Yeah. So he put me on the wing again. I was I was like I mean six foot six one. Um, and he didn't come across many fullbacks who were as big as that. So we could put the ball forward. The crosses were coming on the opposite side. So I knew I'd win my fair share of headers. And and it was you know that that's, that was the game plan. And and you know we we were we were, we were all big lads anyway. We we're all good size. And sometimes a lot of teams lost before they you know they got intimidated before they went out onto the pitch because we were a big bruising side. But, but could play. And you were fit as well? Yeah, yeah, fit yeah. Oh, fit for that. Yeah, I mean, when I went back before about the lads, the fitness levels they are now and what goes into it, you know, we were still, you know, for other, where we were, we were fit. We were fit. But I mean, you know, we worked hard on the training ground, long hours, long, long hours, which I don't do now. Um, and, and, you know, worked really hard on the run and the physical side, definitely. So you ended up, like Wally, when I was talking to Wally, you played in all four divisions for yeah. Wimbledon. Yep. Which again, as I said to him, is extraordinary. It would never happen now. A no. club got from the yeah. old fourth up to the. Uh, it's a shame, isn't it? Do you think that's a shame? I do. It's not, never going to happen again. It's you know, that's a, that was a dream, isn't it? Really. Well, I, mean, I think it's an incredible shame because it it, it well, one, everyone likes the fairy tale story. Yeah. And yeah. and Wimbledon is a kind of fairy yeah. tale talk story. Yeah. And um, it's already been a fairy tale. Get getting getting six oh, yeah. promotions in how many years we did to get. Yeah. Back up, back up, back up oh. to the third level in in, yeah. in League One. Yeah, phenomenal. But it's it's still extraordinary that you did it, even though it, it was different times. And I guess it was this fitness, this organisation, this self belief yeah. that enabled you to do that. Yeah, and and buying into the philosophy. You know, is I think nowadays you can whoever's got the biggest budget goes close to winning the league. Every now and again, you'll probably get two or three teams in that division who'll punch above their punch the, above their budget and they will finish high and they'll get they'll get a lot out of that what they've got but no our budget wasn't comparable to I don't think in any league to, to being the best and uh, and we punched we kept we just kept doing it as I said before we the bar kept being set and we kept we kept going above it we kept raising it it would be set again and we, we'd we'd get there we'd, we'd we'd get there because you know we, we all we all were together we was, we was one group all believed in what we was doing all knew what we was doing all knew everyone's jobs we knew exactly what was going to happen at, at, at every time, so we was all on, you know, basically singing on the song, the same song sheet, and it was, it was, you know, it was a, it was great. And you all knew what the opposition was likely to do as well, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, Always well drilled. Yeah. yeah the, the attention to detail with with uh, Dave Bassett was was uh, was great. Yeah, and it, that it shows you how important. You know, I mean, we're, we're trying to instill that now. We're trying to dig down and get the same sort of things. You know, we, it was he was well prepared. Yeah. And so you were still a bit of a rebel because you told me that you used to read the program at half time yeah. sometimes. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if I was rebelling or I just used to switch off and lack concentration because the te probably the team talks like the, the training sessions used to go on for quite a bit. So I think I used to get a little bit bored or I just to read. I just just to, just to drift off. And how many times he caught me reading the program? Uh, and he used to, he, used to well, he, was, he, he took it well really because I mean. You think now? Now I'm now I've gone from you know a footballer to coach or ma manager or, or that side of it to actually when you're trying to give them give them information that it's key at the half time or before the game and someone's reading the program. I'm not sure how I take that and I'm not sure how how Wally would take that. So you know, but but Harry 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 yeah he went he, he did well with that because it's uh, it's unusual, isn't it? <laughs> so. You also socialised a lot, didn't you, as yeah, well? Yeah. Which um, I think footballers do less these days. It's kind of, I think it's partly because they move oh, around yeah. more. Yeah. But you had this bond and it, it kind of, obviously, the, the, the crazy gang thing, which was uh, Wally was given, the, is kind of given the credit for starting that. Yeah. Were you kind of 
aware of this crazy gang spirit or were you a little bit on the outside of that? No, he was aware, he was all in it. It was all, it was, I mean, the, the thing about that, the thing about the team, if, if you went through the, the ages, we had no experience, pros. We never had, we never had anyone, you know, we, we were just young. I mean, the only, probably the most experienced one we had was Dave Bassett and he was the manager and he was encouraging this. He was encouraging us to go out. Yeah. And he did all three through his career, even at Sheffield United. I used to say to him, we need the boys, need a night out, we need to go. And they go, right, let's get it organised. So we would still do it then. So yeah. you knew that that was the way to get everyone back on board. Um, so we, 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 were, we were a good age. As I said, there was, there was Kevin Gage a year below me. Wally was probably a little bit older. And there was, there was five or six of us. So we all, we all growing up, all, all going out. All, all, and and that's how, that's, there, was no big, there was no big age gaps. So we was all the same area. And, it was, and we used to have, yeah, we used to have, a, we used to have some fun and going away end the season. Or it, we'd be out, it, we'd be out definitely once a week, sometimes twice a week. We'd go out straight after the game. It was, it was probably like playing for, a, like Carlsberg, t- Carlsberg Sunday team. But you know, because we, we had that, <laughs> well, we had that, we had that, you know, we had that spirit off the pitch that yeah. we could have a few drinks and use invisible. There's no social media, so we could go off and, and 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 have a good time and do what you want. It was never any any repercussions on a Monday morning. But we had that we had that bond we had that bond yeah it was brilliant. So that was the kind of play hard work hard. Thing. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was, it's not you know it's when you think about it you got a club that their their uh, their players lounge is a nightclub. That's right. Yeah. And we'd stay after the game we'd be in there and we'd still be in there till the end of it yeah. at two o'clock while we're getting thrown out after. So that that was that that was that that was quite encouraging us to stay in there. And when you were going up the divisions, was the belief in you that you could keep going up? Yeah, I, well, I, me personally, I had I, 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 um, a belief that I could do that. I mean, it's, I don't want to sound bigger than anything, but I backed my ability. I just let my contract run out every year because I thought, you know, I, I, the, it wasn't, we wasn't on great money, but I, I wanted, I was ambitious. I wanted to get to the top. I knew I was close to the Welsh team. I think I've got a plan. I've got my, my first cap was in the third division, the old third division. So I was always, I was always looking to, to you know, further my career. Wanted to play in the top division. Now I did say I think in we used to have an old magazine, a fanzine called the Don's Outlook. I remember, remember that, it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I got an interview with Andrew Watson once, and Andrew Watson asked me the question, "Would you like to play in the first division?" I said, "Definitely. Uh, hopefully with Wimbledon one day." And that was the answer. But I had to put the Wimbledon one in because I didn't think I'd ever get there. But my my ambitions was to go, um, to go to the to the very top. That's what I wanted. But to actually achieve it. I said that tongue in cheek, but we actually did that. But I didn't see that then. I just thought oh, I've got to say that. But I just, it just, it just, it just developed and the momentum. It was, it was fantastic. And did playing uh, for Wales with obviously a lot of more name players. Yeah. Did that kind of increased your ambition. Yeah, I guess. definitely. Yeah, you want to play. You're playing with people like Ian Rush and you know and, uh, Mark Hughes or even even Neville Southall and, and Ratcliffe. You know, they they were Mickey Thomas. I mean, you know, they, they were top players, and not, and the, you know, you, you're playing with them, they're your teammates, you, you're training with them all the time, and that, that was, you know, it, it was that was an eye opener. Thinking, then I need a bit more of this. And, and do know. they treat you equal when yeah. you go in? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it was never every. I've never been to a. I've never been to a club, perhaps one, but I won't mention them. That we never ever got. I've never ever got treated equal. Everywhere you've gone, you know, you've been, you know, you you've been welcomed. Um, and and it's it, you know it's, it's been great for that. That's what football's like. You know you go in, like you're a new face, but then people look after you and make sure that you're settling in. You know we've got some loans coming out Wimbledon. The boys are making sure they're okay. Everyone does things to make sure you fit in because you, know, you want you want good players in your club. You want the good players to to make sure that we you know we we keep progressing. So um, I'm just checking my notes that I haven't missed anything out in terms of my notes now. Basically go. Oh yeah, so let's let's look at. So you were in the um, you were in the uh, what's now the championship, the second level, second level, which was the old second division. Yeah. And we start off fairly well, and suddenly we get towards the end of the season, and we realise we can get promoted to the first division. Mm. You go to ha- go to Huddersfield, yeah. and that is the match. If we win that match, mm. we get promoted. So do you remember what it was like in the dressing room before the game? Was there this belief we're going to do it? Was the nervousness? What was the what was the mood like before no, that? I don't game? I don't ever recall nervousness. I don't I, I, I do I do rec- I do recall it and, and realise you know, we was we were I don't think we were quietly confident. We you, you, you didn't you didn't know, but you, you it was a game it was a game that was winnable. So you know we was as I said we was prepared, and and the 
the prize was too big to, to not get. It's one of them ones where we've got to do this, we've got to do this. So I know sometimes you can try too hard, you can, you know, it doesn't work, things don't work for you, but I mean, I think it worked like a dream. I think, I do remember, I do remember, I think, off the ball, I, I got uh, I got into a altercation with a player, and to be fair, we could have both got sent off, and it, it went, it, it went, it was missed. And I just remember thinking, you, it, you idiot, what are you doing? Because I could have got, you know, if you get sent yes. off and we're down to 10 men, or, you know, or we both get sent off, but I'm th- oh, I just remember that, and I just thought, calm down. And that probably was a good thing. I just thought, calm down, relax, because you can get too excited, yes, and, of course. and then and that that calmed me down personally. But you just, I just think it was a, it was just that, you know, that the self belief you had, and it wasn't nervousness. It was just, you know, we're we're going to do this. Did people try and wind you up much? Oh yeah, well, you had a bit of that. You knew there were some idiots out there, and and uh, but I mean, I, and perhaps I, I did used to get wound up a little bit, um, probably too much, but. You know, uh, and that was once, but then you know, but I think luckily that you realise and calm down. But there were sometimes, but I think that's that's even now. I think there's there's always going to happen in football. There's always going to be some you know, personalities that clash or someone who's trying to upset people. That's that's the nature of the beast. And do you ever feel like having taking revenge on someone? They do something you know, you tackle. You get over that, I guess. Yeah, you get taught at a young age. You get taught. I mean, you get taught at a young age that you don't you know you don't retaliate straight away. Just bide your time football you're in the game for 20 years if someone's upset you you might bump into them again you don't you never know what you know what what happens in football so you just make you know you talk very young do not retaliate do not put yourself into a position where you're letting the team down they're down to 10 men just calm and just remember you know just leave it for another day if, if you want to so that was that was instilled that was that was an early lesson but that was the thing I've gone against that at Huddersfield and that was crazy because I'm thinking, you know, yeah. that could have I been so much different. I think they finished with ten men. Is that right? Yeah, I think they did. Yeah, yeah. I think they did. I think the fella, the f- I think the fella who I got the occasion, I think he got ended up getting sent off. I think, but he was like, it was a bit, he, he was uh, crazy on that day. Mm. So anyway, we win that game, and so we we're, we're, we know we're in the uh, the top league, we're mm. in the first division. So what's the feeling then? You're kind of no, going to play the big boys. Man we came United, back. We came, we came back on the train. So we came back on the train and went straight out. We straight out. In fact, by the time we got on the train, we, we I think we drank all the drunk most <laughs> of the beer there. It was just, it was, it was, oh, it was a dream. It was a dream, you know. And and also, also a bit worrying because you think you're up there now. Now that you now we've, we've now this is going to be complete and utter. The step from the, the that division to the top division. I mean, it's even massive now. But you think, Crikey, you now you're gonna. Oh, we've had a t- we had West Ham in the cup that year, and we've had we've had a, we've had a few. We had Forest, we've been you know, in the cup. We've had we've 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 had the taste cup, of yeah, one or two, yeah. but now you're going to play against people like Brian Robson and people you've seen on the television. You've watched play for England, and you're still on the terraces. Me watching England, when watching these people play. Um, you know, Glenn Hoddle. It's like it's it was like wow. You know, it's, it'd be great because this this um, this Wally touched on when I interviewed him. It it was this way we had. Of closing people down, mm. insofar as they were better. He, he was talking about playing Nottingham Forest in the in, in the Milk Cup. How mm. he knew, we knew that as, a, as a club, one to one, we couldn't beat Nottingham Forest. Yeah. So we had to play a different way. Yeah. It's not some intimidates probably too strong a word, but we had to show aggression, close them down, give them no space, so they couldn't play their game. Yeah. And I guess we were doing that a lot. You were doing that a lot. Well, that was our game. In the old really. first division. Yeah, that was our game. That was our game. We we. No, we, we you know, one thing the one thing that one thing that we could bring to the party, one thing we could we could do, we could be the fittest team in the league. That was easy, that's a given. Now you might not be the best you might not be the most gifted, there's better footballers out here, there's better players, but at least we can affect what we can affect. So if we could be as fit as anybody else, then that's give us a head start there. If we could be supremely organised, which some players play off the cup, some teams some teams just play I mean play five a sides and don't do team play don't do set pieces so we know if we had our pattern our shape and our set pieces then that's another tick in the box so we were just trying to what we could affect we, we could do and after that after that maybe it's down to a bit of luck and you know, probably making less mistakes and if somebody makes mistakes we punish them but you know we, we just had that that game plan of oh, this is basically us and if you're going to beat us you're going to have to work extremely hard to beat us because you know we won't we won't lay down and there's things like we talked about on the phone like I remember Dave Besant taking these free kicks yeah. almost up to the halfway line yeah. of, of, of our half. Yeah. 
and I'd never seen anybody else do that. But you, 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 you told me that actually you got the idea from the whole city. Yeah, the Tony Norman who I played with Wales. I think he was the first one, or I remember the first one to do it. And and be fair, that was because us and Hull, we were fourth division. We were we were rivals then, going up in the, like years back before, probably three years before we got to the first division. So that was um, that was always like head to head with Hull. Then it was Portsmouth. We always had these head to heads with teams each division. But I remember he did it and. To be fair, it was, a, it was a great one, and we had that we adopted it, adapted it, and Dave Besson was accurate. He could kick it a mile, and it was it was another it was more ammunition, it was yeah. another another string trap, another weapon that we could use. And then the other teams have got to deal with it, and they, they couldn't deal with it very well. And that's what I always felt was Wimbledon did things so much in a different way from the other clubs. Mm. Yeah. And as you say, it wasn't always about our talent. No. But it was about our ability to yeah. play the game that we played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. had our own brand of football and we was effective. We was effective and I always remember I think was it Billy McNeil who was manager of Man City when they beat his first game of the season. I think his interview said along the lines of I think it was three know, one we three lost. Three one but his yeah. interview says yeah. don't worry about Wimbledon he said they're gonna cause they're all right, they'll cause a lot of upsets. they a lot of people won't want to play against them. Yeah. And that was from the first game. So And then by the fifth game we were top. Yeah. We went to Watford. We were top. We stayed top. We won one yeah. 0 I remember that very well. Yeah, yeah. I scored the goal. Yeah. Is that, that you scored? Did mm. you? I don't remember mm. that bit. Yeah. Mm. So and then that season we, uh, we had, I think we won the double over Man, Man United, United and Liverpool. It was just yeah. extraordinary. Really. I mean, the, they were the ones when you go. You know, like you say, you you, you went to the, the the standout was was Anfield for me. We won we won two one at Anfield and that, the team they had there they had Lawrence and Hansen. I mean, Dale Gleish scored this left foot curl around, but it was like, it was unbelievable. It was a fantastic goal. Rushy played it. They had, they had an unbelievable team. And to actually go there to, to Liverpool and win 2-1. I mean, Corky scored, I think Corky scored second half from a corner um, with Mark Morris flicked on in the cop end. And then, but after that game, the, the actual ovation from the, the cop that they, had to, they gave us was, was incredible. Really, really, really good. And what and what do what do these players say to you afterwards? Like they're no, the they, better players. <laughs> you've no, beaten they them. No, you don't. You just, you just shake hands. You move off. You don't get into the conversation. That they've just we we'd beaten them, and I think that's gifted the league to Everton. So we were, they weren't having conversations. It was just shake hands and away you go. We 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 we'll, you know we'll celebrate ourselves. You they don't need to say anything. You know you're not you're not looking for adulation or oh you're great at this, you're great at that. We know we'd we'd gone and won, and it's saying I don't think anyone anywhere would have expected at that time and that, and that's what we used to do upset yeah. people so the end of that season your last game i picked this out of something i read it may or may not be true your last game for wimbledon was away at sheffield wednesday and is it true that the team basically were drinking in the pub the previous night in sheffield yes. and got pretty pissed oh yeah got, got, got and then pretty pissed, we still won pissed. two nil yeah we got well, well that how was did that, that happen that, well we um we'd gone up and uh, we'd gone up because there was a place called Hammers, a pub called Hammers with Hallam Tower Hotel, which is north of Sheffield. So we'd all had dinner and said to um said to the manager, can we can we have a drink? Can we go to the pub? Because it was like a it was end of May. I got always May time, but it was a nice evening, nice evening up. He said, and everyone was sit outside on the grass. He said, yeah, go and have a drink, but there was a curfew. But the, we, the curfew went out the window. It was the last time we seen it. it didn't matter. <laughs> so we was in the it was all in the pub. And we were we were drinking right up proper drinking. It was and come back and caused a few ructions in the hotel and stuff was getting thrown about and but as as we did, but we in the in the in the pub was um in the pub was Chamberlain Mark Chamberlain. He was in the pub. He was injured. He was in the pub with his wife. And he played for uh, Sheffield. Wednesday. Yeah, he played for Sheffield, yeah. but he wasn't playing that day. But he was in, and he's he's looking around and he's he's seen us and he spoke to. But he I think he he, he couldn't believe it. So he, he I think the next day he's come in. So when we're we're playing them. He must have gone in their dressing room at half one or two o'clock, whatever. Was saying, by the way, lads, they were pissed last night. You're going to beat this mob. You got, you know, they're, they're absolutely falling all over the place. I know we we, we beat we, <coughs> we beat two nil. We beat two nil. But how come? Um, I think we, I think it was a party. It was party, and it was relaxed. In, in the, the the pressure was off. We stayed up. It was more like it was a celebration, and I it was a, it was it was. It's like a carnival, you know. You know, it, it was just. We but were I, going, mean, I mean, how do you beat them? No, next I don't. Day? Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I think me and I think Andy Sayer scored. We scored. In fact, I scored. One of my last touches was scoring for Wimbledon. And that we just, I don't know. We just come out and and. But I put it. But we we could we were able to play because we were fit, so we could get the alcohol out of the system. We could still run about. But 
for them to, this day it's um it was it was some feat yeah <laughs> <laughs> so anyway you left and you went to newcastle yeah how was that no not not, not well I was, I was pleased i went i mean it's a big club you know i always kept saying i said to you before let my contracts run out and i want to go to a big club and i want to try and play so when there's opportunity in newcastle come come in for you you think wow you know so I spoke to them and uh, spoke to them and, and said, "Yeah, I'll sign." Uh, went up there um, and things didn't didn't go great. Things didn't go great. We didn't have a good start. Um, we signed a Brazilian Mirandina. He'd, he'd come, so there's a big uh, big euphoria with him. But we weren't we weren't a team. And what I've been used to, what I've been used to with the Wimbledon, it was it was a shock. It was an absolute shock to go up there and and probably the opposite of what we'd achieved at Wimbledon. It was it was. I found it. I found it hard. I really found so it. How hard. was it a shock? Well, it was just. It wasn't. You know, we would. What all the all the qualities we had at Wimbledon, then weren't quite in place there. Okay. Um, I'm not. I'm not having a go at the club or the manager or anything like that. But what I was used to. I mean, eight, eight years with eight years and probably seven years with Dave Bassett as a manager at Wimbledon. You know, you're gonna. It, it just. It was. A, it was. A, it was probably. It was just too much. Not disappointing, but it just wasn't. Wasn't. It wasn't the right move for me. Yeah. So you just stayed there a few months, then yeah. you went to Watford. Yeah, well, that was Dave again. Dave Bassett was at Watford, yeah. so I came. I came down. In fact, he tried to sign me at the same time as Newcastle, but I wanted to try. I wanted to go to. I didn't fancy Watford. I just wanted to go to Newcastle because we played there. And you know what the stadium's like, and everyone knows the history and and you know, the fans that are, that are around Newcastle. So I went. Yeah, went. Ended up going to Watford and stayed two and a half years there. And to be fair, I, I enjoyed my time there. It was good. You know, yeah. uh, got a Player of the Year and a couple of goalless seasons there. So. I did, I did enjoy my football there, but um, and Elton John turned up. Yeah, it was the great. And he was great. He was he was really good. I mean, obviously, we I met him when I was, I was trying to sign me the first time. Met him in the Green Park Hotel when he was off to it. He's off to America with his um, big concert uh, with his with his tour. And he had all his all his all his um, costumes were there and everything. As there was, so we had I had probably half hour of him before he was due yeah. to go, um, and I decided against it, but. After that, even after that, he was he was a he used to have his, he used to have a garden party with the players in the summer. We'd all go to his house, um, and when Dave Dassett got the sack, he uh, he come and found me and, and took me in the ballroom and had a chat and was quite concerned. He didn't want me to go, and he was and he, he basically asked me if I'm okay. And yeah. and he was he was he was a really really nice guy, he yeah. was a good guy. Yeah, and you won Player of the Year. Yeah, in 1988. Yeah. 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 So you were popular there, yeah. Yeah, and no, I, I, I did, I did okay. It was good. It was good. It was nice because I don't think Dave Bassett got, got. You know, it was probably the wrong move for Harry. Like I had to put the wrong move when I went to Newcastle. It wasn't probably the right through for Dave Bassett. He might admit that. I don't know, but I think he has done. Um, and he got, you know, he got a lot of stick and lots of, for his time of his ways and what he did. But it was nice, to, nice to think that you know he brought me in. And off the back of that, I was quite successful. So he didn't do all bad, you know. I like to think that I. You know, me being player of the year, me getting goal of the season twice, is is basically saying you know he he he, he didn't know what he was doing. He he just didn't give him the chance. But you missed missed out on winning the FA Cup, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, Wimbledon Wimbledon won, didn't they? Against didn't what they play what from the was it the quarter quarter final at Plough Lane? Yeah, yeah. Plough Lane. Yeah. We um, did, did you play in that yeah, game? Yeah, 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 yeah. We were winning one 0 at half time in the quarter final. Brungale got sent off, and they were down to ten men. I'm thinking because we got to the quarterfinal the year before That's right, with Wimbledon yeah. with Tottenham, so I'm yeah. thinking, wow. And at the time we didn't know, but it was Luton the next round. Luton was going to be the semi-final, and um, I'm thinking, come on, 45 minutes, 45 minutes just to get through. And uh, and Fash, Fash, <laughs> Fash was fantastic. He just John McLennan couldn't cope with him, and Fash just it was all over. Two goals and two goals later we lost two one, and that was that was uh, that was that was a tough one to take. Just going back, was your relationship with Fash okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, oh, didn't, yeah, yeah. he didn't get on with uh, with everybody. He didn't, no, didn't get I on with Sanchez. Yeah, like I spoke to him a few times since as well. Since you know, I spoke to him a couple of times on the phone and bumped into him. He's, he's all right. He was all right, Fash. I mean, he's very effective, good at what he did. And I mean, while he didn't while he didn't really want to fit in with a crazy gang mold or he didn't want to get involved with a skull dugger, he definitely didn't come out that often with us when we were socialising. Yeah. But you know, he was he was a he was a, a part of the team and part of the part of the way we did things. And you know, you, like, you haven't got to get on well with everybody. Um, it's unusual if you do, um, but he, you know, we, you know, we knew what Fash was, and you know, he was a, another, another powerful player for us. Yeah. So I won't go into too much detail of all your um, other clubs you played for. I want to come on more to your coaching side, but 
you you briefly went to Palace and then you went to Sheffield United and the fans love you there, didn't they? Yeah, that was that was a good move. Yeah, that was a good move. To be fair, I, I, I started. I was at Palace. I didn't have the best starts, but I'd got myself. I was doing extra training. I got myself at a level where I, I, I was I was happy. I was fit and I was ready. If, if Coppola had give me the chance, I was ready to go. And I get a phone call in the in the January, um, just saying, look, you're going to go to Sheffield United on loan. So I'd gone I'd gone up there. Um, and played, I think it was Man City where in the first game, but I was in a good place, so I knew I wasn't fighting for fitness, I was ready and, and I just wanted that opportunity and I think the six months of frustration at Palace helped me because I was, you know, I just, I just wanted a fresh challenge and, and really enjoyed it and, and, and done great, yeah. And then, yeah, Sheffield United, the fans helped to raise your yeah. transfer fee. Yeah, well, it coincided. I think I joined in the January, and then, then when it come round, is the um, the Grand National. So that's April, the Grand National, isn't it? Then about March, yeah, April, yeah. I think April. Yeah, it's near the semi-finals, isn't it? Yeah. April. So um, then they they, they organised um, a sweep. They organised these tickets, the Grand National tickets, and the money would go to to buy me. So I mean, it's a great idea, but again, Sheffield United is a bit like Wimbledon. There's a nice social side to it. So we used to have a few nights out with the boys. And the amount of times I'd go out and people would come up to me with these tickets saying to me, do you want to buy a book of tickets? <laughs> so I said, what? He said, this is, this is for you. Do you want to buy a book of tickets? So I'm in bars saying, if I don't buy them, it shows I don't want to be there. So I've got to buy them. So I'm, I'm, I bought loads. So I must have been the only one who's ever contributed to his own transfer fee. <laughs> and I couldn't, I couldn't not turn them down. Yeah. So, well, I never won either. But they raised £410,000 mm. for you. Yeah, pretty impressive. Yeah. So you played for the Blades for 150 appearances, um, were very popular, and then you left and went to Derby County. What was yeah. the reason you left? That was a mistake, really. That was a mistake. Um, again, it, it, it's it. I, my contract was up, and I, you get to and we get to. I think I was was I 30, 32, 33. You could get a free transfer. You could you could leave for nothing if you they let your contract run out. So uh, Howard Kendall came in, Dave Bassett had left, and I wasn't playing for Howard Kendall. I've I, been on sub and I'd started and I've been sub, but at 32, 33, I, I knew I had many games left in me, so I didn't want to be sub. I'd rather yeah. go and play somewhere else. So I spoke to him and, and he said, oh, we're going to give you a new contract. And, and I quite like it, blah, blah, blah. And I just said, well, you know, you've you got to play me. I, I can't stay. So anyway, it, 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 I went, I went. So I could have took the contract. And to be, to be fair, to stay on easy street or to be on the safe side, I could have done that, but I wanted to play, so I left Derby and uh, I left I left Sheffield and went to Derby. Yeah. So um, and we got promoted that year. What I dropped in that championship, we went up. So uh, played a few games in him. So I, I'll take that that prom as another promotion in my career. So I'll, I'll put that on my CV. And then you went to Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah. That we was did, different. Well, that, yeah, that was great. Yeah, that was great. And that's another that's another one. I always wanted to go to Hong Kong and to go and play there and and take my family out there. And, um, my young, my eldest was four, the middle one was two, and my wife was was six months pregnant. So we all we, we all took the family out. We lived on a beautiful island called Discovery Bay on Lento Island, where the where the new airport is, and the lifestyle was 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 fantastic. We had we beat uh, we had beaches, residence club with swimming pools, tennis courts. The the, the weather was beautiful, and my wife uh, we had a uh, our third child was born in Hong Kong. Yeah. So um, no, it's it's a it's good memories, a good place. And then, yeah, I just run through it briefly. You were Hull City briefly, went back. You went to Forest with with Dave Bassett. You went to Hong Kong again. Then you joined TNS. Why did you join TNS? That's a regional, a Welsh league. And yeah, no, it, it was. Um, I was t when I came back. The last time I came back, I was like, I was thinking, I was. I wasn't sure what to do. So the guy who ran TNS was a fella called Andy Cale, and he was a sports scientist at Sheffield United. So okay. he just rang up and said, what, what are you doing? Come and play a few games. So that's what I did. I went to play a few games. Um, uh, and purely while I was just thinking well, the best way to go forward. And when I mean, it wasn't long before I decided that, you know, I think, I, I could, well, I could have earned and played, carried on playing, maybe lower leagues or maybe non-league. I needed to um, I needed to get my coaching badges and make sure that, you know, get a career away from football, which that's the thing with football. You know, I'm lucky, to, I'm lucky I played till I was 36, but... You don't really, you know, you, you try to and you say you do, but you don't really prepare for what's life after football. So it was important that I stopped playing and concentrating on getting my coaching yeah. badges. Well, playing to 36 is pretty good. Yeah, and I was lucky. Yeah, yeah. very lucky. Yeah. So you then joined Dave Bassett again, who's gone to Barnsley. 
you managed uh, the reserves, but you ended up twice being the caretaker manager there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a baptism by fire. Oh, that it? was that was great. Well, the first the first time, the first time was only for a couple of games. The last time I was I had it for the season. I had it for the whole season, um, and uh, we were in administration, fighting relegation, and um, it was it was horrendous. They weren't paying the players properly. They weren't the players weren't getting appearance money. They weren't getting bonuses, relocation money. They weren't getting. We had players who were due um, to due to pay, so that sometimes the transfer fees are paid over a certain amount of appearances. So I had two players if they played another appearance. We were due to pay fifty thousand to Bradford, fifty thousand to Sunderland, so we couldn't play them. Huh. It was it was unbelievable. The goalkeeper they sold the goalkeeper to Birmingham, so and we had a, I had a young eighteen year old in goal, and all this was you know and, and it was it was I didn't have an assistant. I'd have been the youth team manager up, so things were things were dire. But but you must have learned a lot. Oh yeah, no, yeah. it was great. Well, I mean, one of the one of the things was well the. Um, Bradford, we owed fifty thousand to Bradford if this one guy's high ranking played another game. The, the chairman's allowed Black uh, Bradford to join our training ground, so I've turned up to train and they're on the pitches. So I kicked him off and said, "Come back, you can come and train, but come and train at four o'clock when we're not here." Went back to the chairman and said, "Chairman, if they're going to come and play here and train here, can we get can we get some more games for ranking instead of having instead of having one more game to pay fifty grand? Can they give us ten games or five games?" So they agreed. I think we got five games. So the last game, the last, the last one of his games, we had to beat Brentford at home, who incidentally Wally was manager. Oh. To it was, a, it was a crazy day. It was my 40th birthday. We're playing Brentford at home. We've got to win. As I rank in his last game, or he's got to pay the 50 grand. He scores the winning goal in the 94th minute. So we stay out purely on the fact that we got extra games because we let Bradford. Used the training. It was it was unbelievable things but, that were happening. But, but you, 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 you yeah, organised yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, so I asked, I asked yeah, to do that. And we kept did them it. up. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that, and then after, oh, the, and then we had the party. So Wally stayed up. All the boys, a few of the boys, come up. So we had we had fortieth party uh, in Retford that night. And great. And then on the Sunday, it was it was weird because I'm thinking, I'm thinking, oh, I've got, you dodged a bullet there. We could have gone down. Yeah. And it and the way things were the way things were were working against us, we should have gone down. But we stayed up, and um, and yeah, so I'm I'm quite proud of that achievement. It's a good yeah. achievement. Yeah, and then you joined Mark Hughes at uh, Wales. Yeah, and you yeah. managed under under twenty ones there. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was good. I mean, I, I was I was going to LA. I had a job in America. I got offered a job in Pasadena, and I've I've been out to America. Found out where I was going to live. Found the schools for the children. Again, happy to go. Um, I had such a great experience in. In Hong Kong, we thought West Country try America. So to get to America, I had to get a special a visa. To get the visa, it was called an O visa, and I had the ref references from the home nations, the fo the the the, the, um, the four home nations football. So I knew I had Sanchez, agreed Sanchez was at Northern Ireland, Laurie Sanchez. So that was done. I had Billy Kirkwood at Scotland, that was done, and I had Martin Hunter with England, that was done. The one I hadn't got was Mark Hughes. So having played with him since we were 17. Uh, I knew him for years back. Good relationship with him. He, he was he was a great lad. So I phoned him up and said, "Look, Mark, I need a no visa." And he said, "I've been trying to ring you." I said, "What, what, what are you trying to ring me for?" He said, "I'm going to offer you the under 21 national job," because at the time he was man Welsh yeah. manager. So I said, like, "Mark, I said, Mark, I can't I've been a, I've gave away. I'm going to take this job. I've sold my house, but I hadn't exchanged contracts. I've got I've been to America. I've done this." To, to, I said, "I can't do it, Mark." I said, "Put the phone down." Five minutes later, I rung him back. So just talk me through it a little, give me a little yeah. more detail, put the phone down and then said, give me the weekend to think about it. And as soon as his wife came back, I said, we're, we're not going. I took the job. Yeah. So that was um, a close call. I wouldn't yeah. have minded LA. The kids would have loved LA. They still rib me now that they didn't go to, I think they were going to live next to Kim Kardashian, but, um, <laughs> but it's, that wasn't to be. So yeah. um, but a, a good decision because you know, the relationship with Mark Hughes, I mean, even playing for Wales, to get, even playing for Wales in the first team was a big decision for me. Yeah. So it's 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 it's, uh, it's been good for me. And then actually, your relationship with Mark Hughes continued to Blackburn, yep. to Man City, yeah. and to Fulham. Yeah, and to QPR. And to QPR. That's, that's right. Yeah. That's so so yeah. this this is the the last job he had. Southampton. Um, unfortunately, he lost it uh, uh, probably a month or so ago. Just for Christmas. Um, that was the only one I'd never been never been able to to uh, to go with him. But there was talk, and he was trying to he was trying to put things in place for me to go. But it, was, it wasn't to be, so I didn't go there. And and uh, you know, I've had a couple of job offers, but then obviously this job came up. This offer, Wally's offered me this job, and 
and here I am. But Mark Hughes doesn't get good press, does he? Somehow no, the press have got a down on him. But I you think I th he doesn't court the press. You've got you know you, you look at some of the managers; they court the press and they and they wine and dine them, and they've got a quote and they've got a story. And, and Mark is a Mark's quite a private person, quite and he's as intelligent intelligent man. But he he doesn't he doesn't do that. He just he just wants to. I think he you know he deals with him. He wants to deal with him, and I think because they probably don't get any more than what they actually you know they, that's what you're getting. They don't he doesn't go over over and above anything like that. I think they. They um they choose to you know, not not like him as a way other managers do. But you had you worked with him for thirteen oh, yeah, years. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's not right the press. And it's it's it, maybe it's the London press. I don't know, but it's not right what the, how the press perceive him. Although you know, although probably the, although they, they they probably feel that they they don't get they don't get enough out of him. I don't know. So your last job before. Um, coming to AFC Wimbledon five years you were the under 21 coach at Stoke City mm. yeah yeah that was good yeah. that was yeah. good that's a good club um, again again in football it's unusual to stay at, uh, playing wise you can probably stay at longer but as a as a coach or a manager it's very rare you get to stay I think is it 18 months two years tops to actually stay somewhere for five years I yeah. think it was nearly five years at Blackburn which I really enjoyed it and then and five years at Stoke. The other times have been eighteen months, a year, a year. So it's you know it's it's you normally when you move a little bit longer. So it's nice to settle and nice to have five years where you know you know you you can enjoy your job and get on with your work and and help develop. And my job was to develop lads for the first team. So fortunately, at the end of that, we we we, we had um, we had a lot a lot get through. Um, and you know and I think one played, Tyrese Campbell played the other night, scored two goals in the FA Cup against Shrewsbury. So. You know the, the the young lads who, who we've helped develop all the way through there, they're doing all right. And then you had a bit of period out of work before Wally yep. called you. What's it like to be out of work for a time? It's okay to begin with. Depends what time of year it is. But it was just after the New Year, so uh, well, I preferred probably Christmas and enjoyed me Christmas a bit more. But it was it was it was okay. It was nice. You can settle down. I was doing a lot of travelling, um, and you, you you can just relax. I had a few holidays. You go away, recharge the batteries, and. Um, and then, but then you soon get itchy feet. You don't, you don't, you don't want to be out too long. But you never know when a job. You never know what you, you can't. A certain world, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, it's only a phone call. My wife, you know, I keep saying to my wife, it's only a phone call. It's only a phone call. And then many times, you know, we, we plan to do stuff, or we booked this, or done this, or planned a holiday, or even moved house once. And I had a phone call and I'd gone, so I'd, I'd have to leave her to move the house. About, I've left, I've left her loads of times because once you, once you, once the phone call goes. Is in you, yeah. you're gone. Yeah. So that's how football works, and they, they come. It comes out of the blue. And to be fair, this this came out of the blue. You know, when when Wally, uh, I spoke to Wally when he was in India. You know, I knew he was in for the job, and I knew he was going to get an interview. But um, you know, I didn't, I didn't, uh, you know, did, or surprise when, a surprise when, you know, when this came about. And now you're AFC Wimbledon. Mm. What's your initial feeling? No, that's good. It's great to be back. I'm loving it. I'm I'm absolutely loving it. I'm loving the role, loving the job. Uh, the players have been great. The, the, the staff, the 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 staff, the first team staff are, are excellent. Um, everything about it, you know, it's 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 um. I don't, I'm not sure. Again, it's it's a long way from home, and I think I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gone to any other club apart from this. I think you know once Wimbledon Wimbledon come calling. And while he offered me the opportunity, then it was a yes straight away. It wasn't even let me think about it. Of course, of course, I'll do it. And um, and and, it's, and I've really really enjoyed it. You see, the old Wimbledon spirit we talked about with you, I talked to Wally about, and and long term fans all know that's Wimbledon spirit. But of course, football's changed now. The players are much more appear to be much more mercenary. They move much yeah. easier. They don't stay at clubs so long. Um, do you think that we can recreate to some extent that old Wimbledon spirit? It's, it's in the club as such, yeah. but we seem to have lost it well, that's, on the got, pitch. Yeah. It's got to be our identity. It's got to be, you know, that you, to Wimbledon. I've got, if people think of AFC Wimbledon, the old Wimbledon, whatever you want to do, it, it's got to be an identity. Then this is what they were like. This is what they're about. And 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 I think that's 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 how we've got to try and get that back. And I think I think it's not too far away. You know, the the, the players have responded. Um, they're everyone, everybody in training every day is given given their best. You know, we've got a, a big squad, so some are going to be disappointed, but they're not showing that they can't all play at the same time, unfortunately. But you know, it's it's um, again, I keep saying that words gathering momentum, but 
you know, we've we've shown signs of improvement. We've shown signs of boys buying into it. The results have shown that as well. Yes. So you know, unfortunately, every time we get a decent result, everyone else seems to get good results. So while we're not, you know, we, you want to be seeing progress by climbing the league, but you know, quietly we're going about our business. No, and the progress for me is we're we're winning more than we're losing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but but, but, I don't know, but you know, the fans and we all want to get out of that bottom four, but we're just we're ticking along nicely, and we just got to keep gathering and keep gathering. And and, uh, and and be patient, but you know they 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 do they're, they're doing great, and what we're asking them they're doing, and we're having some big results. And do you kind of you know the whole thing of the crazy gang thing? Okay, there can never be another crazy gang in football. But do you feel there's little bits of that amongst the players, or are the players just different now? Because a lot of the players don't drink yeah, alcohol, for instance. No, it's right. It's different now. It's different. Now. I don't think I don't think you'll get that back. Yeah, some don't drink alcohol, some, and and we don't we don't really want to encourage them to drink. Um, you know they've got to be. We were asking them to. We were asking each player to run 12k in a game on a, on a Saturday, and we would play Fleetwood on Tuesday night 12k again. Yeah. So and then West Ham probably needs to run more. So it's it's it's, it's different now. It's different now. You, you won't get. We don't really want to encourage them drinking. Or you can drink, but have drink at the right time. You yeah. know. Again, social media. Don't put yourself in a position where it's going to come back and cause a problem with us, the club, or yourselves. And, and and you've got players. I mean, uh, particularly at this club, you've got players who live all over. So yes. we all we were all local. We were, in the beginning we was all local, yes. which which helped. So yeah, we don't, we don't we haven't necessarily got to get that back. We haven't got to have a drinking culture back. We don't necessarily want that. But there's other ways. You know, the boys the boys are young. The boys are hungry. And I think the one th common thing that we all got is you don't want a, a relegation on your CV because you don't know what you're going to do next year. So uh, I, I I think we can get it without the without the alcohol. alcohol. Right. We really do. Good. Well, I'm glad you're positive. Yeah. Thank you for coming along to talk to me. No problem. Pleasure. Thank you. So I'm just going to actually ask you one question. A bit unfair, but what's your greatest moment in football? What's your, what's the best goal you scored? Do you remember that? And then come to, I should have asked Wally, but I forgot. Um, best goal, well, the, one, the one I've probably seen the most was the, the against Man United in 93 and in in I think it was the fifth or sixth round. and. Uh, and I love it. We, we were we were playing at home to Manchester United in the cup. We were one 0 down. Gig scored, and then we equalised one all. And then I got a one v one with Schmeichel, and I just dinked it over him. Yeah. And that was live on the BBC. And that was when, that was before you know, long, not long time before Sky, but the, the the viewers on there wasn't so many games in live. So that was the one they picked out. So the viewing figures would have been quite high. So that was the one that probably went into most living rooms around the country. So that was that was a satisfying one. But I've had I've had a I've had a few I'm quite pleased about I've got a few but I I enjoy scoring goals I'm lucky that I, I scored a few yeah I've got over 100 I've got over 100 uh, league and cup goals in my career so yeah. that was um that, that that's nice to look back on do, do, do you miss I remember reading that or seeing seeing George Best t talk about it once that there's nothing to beat that feeling of euphoria with all the fans are cheering yeah. when you've scored and that. He could never get past well, that I, somehow. I, yeah, I mean, I take yeah, definitely. I take it a stage further. I mean, we, I, I, I go past pitches and I look at the, the grass and I look at the nets, and, and sometimes now they've got all these wonderful nets, red and white, yellow and blue, Wimbledon, whatever these nets are, and, they, and the goals are magnificent. And, and you think to yourself, I'm never going to hit the back of the net ever again. I get quite sad about that. Yeah. Thinking, look at that. That's I just want to put one in the back of the net. In fact, we played. Um, was at Man City. We had a trip. We got invited by Barcelona to play Barcelona in a new camp, and um, and I was coaching, so I was on there doing the pitch, and and that was it was like their equivalent to their um, uh, what do you call it? Um, what's it? What's the charity shield? Their equivalent to charity okay, shield. Yeah. So we got you invite a foreign team to come over. So they dimmed the lights. They won all these trophies. Pep was manager. One by one, they called them up. Onto it's hundred thousand people in this in this yeah, stadium, yeah, camp, yeah. and then the, the lights went down, and they, I was stood there like clapping, open mouth, thinking, "Oh my God, there's Messi, there's Puyo, we got one of them Busquets," and then after we could do our warm up, so we did the warm up, and uh, and and again it's that opportunity where you're looking at a goal, and this goal's begging to be hit, <laughs> so they've all gone in, and I'm there with a the physio messing about, and then all of a sudden I'm thinking, "I thought I'm meeting it," and I've took the ball out of my left foot. And I've drilled this ball, and it's gone in the top corner. No one in goal, yeah. but for me, it's gone in the top corner, and I'm doing that with 100,000 <laughs> people, and there's no, you know, what I mean, just as warming up. So I must have looked an absolute idiot. But the fact that I've hit the back of the net is enough. Now, whether that's a new camp, or whether it's on the wreck, yeah. it was just nice to, 
it's just you know I, I'm gonna lose you're gonna lose that and lose it in the back of the net wherever yeah. it is and that's what it's all about putting the ball in the back of yeah. the net isn't it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. no better feeling <laughs> thanks again Glenn for coming no along no problem and uh, good luck with uh, with this season and next season etc thank you and thanks everyone out there for watching Trail Red TV and I hope we see you again soon goodbye